It's election season, so let's talk pork. <coughs> Barreling. It's Voting 101 for 2022 with Matilda Bosley from The Guardian, Australia. You've probably heard politicians being accused of pork barrelling in the news, but what does this actually mean? <coughs> pork barrelling is basically any time the government uses taxpayer money to fund projects designed to win votes, often from an electorate that they need to stay in power. But wait, you say, isn't using taxpayer money to win votes literally the whole point of democracy? And Yes, you have a point. But pork barrelling generally refers to a government providing certain districts with more funding or infrastructure projects than they rightfully deserve in order to gain support in that area. And importantly, doing this by using their power as the incumbent government and not just as a regular election promise. Now, I often use theoretical examples in this video, but there actually is a very recent pork barrelling scandal that demonstrates all of this really well. The sports rorts affair. So imagine, it's 2018 and the Liberal National Government have $100 million to upgrade a bunch of community sporting facilities all across the country. In a perfect world, they would have objectively and fairly worked out which clubs were the most needy and where the money could best be spent. But it's pretty clear that that's not what happened. In Australia, parties win elections by winning over marginal electorates. These are seats where the vote is always super close and notionally that seat could swing either way. Well, back when these sports grants were being allocated, there was an election coming up and some marginal electorates ended up flushed with sporting cash while other needy facilities in safe labour areas missed out. For example, a rowing club in the super affluent Sydney suburb of Mossman got half a million dollars. Now, Mossman, by the way, happens to be in the Warringah electorate where Liberal Tony Abbott just happened to be fighting for his life not to lose his seat to independent Zali Stegel. <laughs> Uh, but a few suburbs away, the Coldale Waves Football Club, which had 600 members, no lights, just one field and no women's change room, missed out. Coincidentally, Coldale's in the Cunningham electorate, which the coalition didn't have a hope in hell of winning. <sighs> but I hear you asking, when this all came to light, what were the consequences for the government at the time? And I answer, not much at all. Firstly, this all became public well after the coalition had already won the 2019 election. In 2020, there was an investigation from the Australian National Audit Office that was pretty bloody scathing of the process. In fact, they found that 43% of the projects funded under this program were actually ineligible when the agreements were signed. Now, the sports minister, National Senator Bridget McKenzie, did lose her job after this all broke, but that was because she failed to disclose that she was a member of one of the sports clubs that were awarded money, not because the government chose to admit that the funding allocation was in any way questionable. Oh, also she's since returned to the cabinet, by the way, just in a different role. See, it's scandals and outcomes like this that have people calling for a federal version of ICAC, which already exists in some states in order to hold governments accountable when things like this happen. Although for not particularly mysterious reasons, the government has failed to make this happen so far. Aww. Oh, federal labor isn't innocent of this either, by the way. They also target grant funding at seats which they need to win elections, but history shows when labor figures got caught doing especially egregious versions of this, they tended to have suffered real consequences. Look, the sports rorts may already feel like ancient history, but the 2022 election will be the first federal vote since this whole saga was revealed. So ultimately, in the absence of an ICAC, it's now up to the people to decide how seriously we want to treat things like this. Okay, now you know what pop barreling is and what it allegedly looks like, but I'm sure you have one burning question left. Where on earth does this term come from? Well, Basically, no one knows, but many think it's a reference to the practice of slave masters giving enslaved people a barrel of salted pork as a reward and then watching them fight amongst themselves for a portion. Yeah, it's safe to say that people don't mean it as a term of endearment.